little too late. I've already summoned meteors. Okay, let's go. Welcome everyone to, to L2R2 PlayStation Podcast. My name is Fonzie and I'm joined by my co-host, Indie Game Dev, and my UK bro from another mum, Callan Freaking Monroe. How are you doing, Callan? Yeah, good. Yeah, I feel I feel energized after that freaking in there, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep it safe for the kids, you know. The one kid I guess that yeah, stumbles. Yeah, yeah. He's he's looking yeah. for Five Nights at Freddy's videos and he finds us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I although I don't think I can say I don't think freaking sounds as good when you when you have a British accent. It's I think that's definitely an American word. <laughs> Everything you say sounds cooler. Like if I get any bad news in my life, I need you to deliver it to me. <laughs> like if I, I want to specifically request a British doctor to, you know, deliver my cancer news or whatever. Yeah, they're free as well, British doctors normally. You can get get go go in and they won't charge you, which is a nice thing. Interesting. About British yeah, how's your t- tell me about your healthcare system? Because in the States, like if you get anything crazy, I mean you're basically already dead, just like with the bills involved. Like, how does it yeah. work in the UK? Uh, yeah, it's just free, like anything. <laughs> but um, but the the problem is because it is free. There's always like big waiting times and like your appointments. Met. Like it's, it's normally all right, but sometimes it's better to go private, um, which is where you pay for. It. It's still not as like extortionate as some of the stuff um, over there. But um, you know, you can pay private to go speak to like a specialist if you're trying to figure out what's wrong. But if you, if you're having like surgery or like something is obviously up then yeah it's just all free you don't pay for your surgeries uh, gotcha. anything um so if you're so if you're in an accident it's perfect if something like pro- crops up and like some, something happens to you then it's ideal because you're just sorted but um yeah if like if you've got something that you want to know what's wrong with you like if you've got like a cough or something um then like yeah normally the the nhs the free sort of part of it isn't great because they normally just give you something and tell you to go away <laughs> gotcha <laughs> well it's better than what we have here i mean i'd take it but yeah it's a whole yeah rigmarole. yeah, uh, it's yeah a, just that, that's for people a lot smarter than me <laughs> as a 32 year old man now like i'm just barely started going to the doctor and frankly the dentist too like as i when i got married to my wife last year i was finally able to like join her insurance plan and that's really the mm-hmm. only way i could get it uh, was through her yeah. and um and now i can you know finally get stuff checked out and it's a whole like laundry list of stuff that i'm having them nice. check out and it's yeah. it feels good to like actually go to the doctor and kind of get your yeah. life in order but i don't know how i just lived life on a hope and a prayer that i didn't break <laughs> anything or you know get sick yeah. but yeah, that that is something I always forget about because it is like one of those things you just don't think of. like like over here you, you think after oh, you break your arm you'll just go hospital and they'll get it sorted. But yeah, I suppose for you guys you have to pay like a million dollars or something if you break your arm, don't you? Pretty much, yeah, a million and a half I think is what they. <laughs> okay. At that point, it's like give me a cool, um, you know, Elon Musk like bionic arm. Like I'm ready for them to yeah. just like modify. If I'm gonna pay the money, it's like I want to have that extra. That extra yeah. pop and like a crushed cans yeah. with my hand. I guess you can do that with a regular hand, but like <laughs> crush something else yeah. in a super extreme <laughs> yeah. with my hand. Yeah, a bionic arm or something. Yeah, yeah, it is and weird. That, it's just one of those like I suppose like luxuries that is just like for people living over here. You just don't even think about it. Like it's not even a thing you worry about or or anything like right. that. You know, we're we're instead complaining about about it because of how busy it always is. Oh, I've got to wait like a week to hear my results back or whatever like <laughs> so we, we do get you know it's same of anybody you just get sort of privileged and you just moan about it even though sort of in other countries like so especially somewhere like united states is what i find so strange like 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 you know we both have the same sort of like uh you know good nice place to live i suppose compared to other places but in one of them it's going to cost you literally an arm and a leg to <laughs> fix your arm and leg <laughs> yeah and it's always so emotional controversial in the states to try and like fix the whole healthcare thing it's always a rigmarole and debate yeah. every year constantly to try and like hey maybe we should you know look into making this affordable for everybody and they're like nah it's it's impossible yeah. and yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's impossible yeah <laughs> yeah even though it works everywhere else but um yeah i was gonna give it a that's quick how, shout that's out what the, <laughs> there you go <laughs> just give a quick impossible. shout out in the chat to uh Hostel276J, just saying, hey, what's up on the chat? We appreciate you joining on YouTube. 
Uh, Callum, uh, how's your week go? Did you play any games? What you been doing? Uh, yeah, I've been playing The Last of Us 2. Been going through that second Ooh, playthrough. Um, I didn't realize there'd been an update which gives you um, like gameplay modifiers. Uh, so I've now got slow-mo when I aim, infinite ammo, all this stuff that's making my second playthrough much nicer. Um, that's dope. So yeah, I remember yeah. them announcing that, but I haven't jumped in since then. Were you... Uh, yeah. Were you now reinvigorated to play it because of The Last of Us Day coming up? Or what, what made you go back to it? Uh, I can't remember what it was that made me go back to it, actually. Um, I think there was something. But yeah, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, I, I, I don't know why. I just sort of started playing it. And I didn't even know these new things were, were there. Um, and yes, yeah, so I, I what them on. And it's a really cool um, sort of screen overlays now as well you can make it look like borderlands like, like this graphic novel sort of edge oh, you can play yeah. it in like uh eight bit pixels and like all the sounds <laughs> were eight bit as well and it's really clever like, i don't have no i mean they're just rendering like modes but i mean right. especially the graphic novel one it, it looks like it was made to look like that um interesting so yeah, i've been having some fun with that uh just got to the hospital so i'm sort of waiting to psych myself up to do that bit again um but yeah, and other than that, I've been, uh, well, I'm reviewing uh, a game called Wise Origin, which is like a old mm. JRPG game, uh, which is coming out on Nintendo Switch on the 1st of October, I think. Um, so I've just been playing that, and I've been really, really enjoying that as well. So Wise Origin, um, I'm going to look that up. Wise, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so it's Y-S, like literally like the letter Y and then S. Oh, okay, gotcha. That's why I wasn't pulling yeah. it up, Y-S. Yeah. That's cool. Um, Cool it's a really spell. fun little like dungeon crawling sort of uh game it's kind of like i don't really know how to explain it. it it reminds me of just old ps2 games you know like your old jack and daxters and like your old dynasty warriors games that are just like they're just a game first and they're just really fun and um there's huge variety in its levels and like things you can do and um but it's also really simple like it's just very just easy to consume um mm. but yeah that uh, definitely a shout out to that game i think it's on ps4 i think it's been out on ps4 for a while and it's coming to switch um and but yeah i definitely recommend it it's a real real good fun little game gotcha i'm looking at footage and it's the ps4 footage and it's like yeah. a top down not top down but i guess isometric yeah like isometric, view somewhat yeah. yeah yeah it's a really, yes. really cool game there's different characters to play as there's three of them they all have like different versions of the same story kind of thing as well so yeah it's a really really cool little game it's a nice little um sort of bygone era kind of thing uh, you know, it takes you back to those just simple but really really fun like ps2 games uh, is there so yeah, i imagine you can you can sink a bunch of time into this does this take a while to get through uh, i'm not sure i think i'm about four and a half hours in and i think i'm maybe just over halfway but just by how i'm judging like my level and sort of all the different f uh, things i found Cause it's kind of metroidvania in the in the way it's all about exploration but there'll be like parts that you can't access because you haven't found that power or gained that ability yet. Um, so um, I feel like I'm maybe yeah, just over halfway or so, but um, uh, but yeah, with the three different characters that, you know, it's good 30, 40 hours to get out of it probably. Um, but it's not, it, it's, it's weird because it is a JRPG because it's, you know, an RPG and it's got that, all that Japanese kind of style to it, but it doesn't play like a JRPG. It's not, complex it's uh just i mean it's quite difficult and there's some really fun boss fights but yeah it just plays like those classic ps2 games we used to love when things were just a bit more simple and sort of more tight <laughs> gotcha gotcha nice yeah, yeah that'd, that'd be cool what about to get you? your take on that um been playing really a bunch of stuff jumping in uh lately over the uh now that i got my pc up and running i've been playing this demo for and i want to say this is coming to consoles eventually but they remade system shock so that uh, dev, mm -hmm. uh, I want to say it's a Jump Dive Studios. They remade the original System Shock, and it just looks really crazy beautiful. And it's very much like uh, it's a precursor to Bioshock. And so it has a lot mm -hmm. of that same vibe. You are wandering around this like space station, and there's a bunch of creepy, uh, you know, monsters mm -hmm. that jump out at you. And you have this uh, this pipe in your hand that you're just beating people senseless with. And it's yeah. uh, it's pretty dope. I've been digging that and jumping around to play more West of Dead on Switch. I really love that game. It's oh, yeah. so crazy hard. But man, I love that game and I want to try and complete it at some point, but I just don't know if I'll ever get to the point where I can finish it. But yeah, um, yeah beyond that, jumping around to, oh, my always, one of my go-tos is Control. So I've been jumping back to Control and playing nice. that really again on PC. Now that with that kind of updated graphics card that I that I ended up moving mm. to, yeah. I could turn all the ray tracing up and all the settings up yeah. and it just looks beautiful, man. 
Yeah, nice. Yeah, that's really really cool. Yeah, glad and you're I found sort out of getting your money's worth out of that out of that car for sure. Yep, and so I, it is, it's a whole process to like lug the PC to the living room, but I wanted, I like yeah. doing that, that way because I can sit on the couch, I have my wireless yeah. controller I can plug in and just do it that way. Yeah. I found out one of my TVs, our TV in our bedroom actually has um, 120 uh, hertz on it, like oh, a, a nice. mode. Yeah. So I'm, I'm interested in just like swapping that out and yeah. trying it. I don't I have no idea what the yeah. refresh rate is. It's, right. it's a full blown like TV, so I'm sure the refresh rate isn't. Or, yeah. uh, You'll have the, to make yeah, sure rate. you get it. Uh, special have you got like the hdmi cables that because you have to get one that supports up to that hertz as well it's the whole thing oh i did not should. check that well i'll have to see yeah, I have I a display use... port thing like a display to yes. hdmi yeah a display port cables are normally just by default fast enough but um yeah it's worth just checking because when i got my new monitor it was just a whole ordeal i had to make sure mm. cables were the right and all that but yeah that, that's really cool that you're sort of it must be nice playing it in sort of on your big TV of a controller. So I don't know if you tried um, what's it called? Steam the the Steam thing. You can like stream your Steam onto your TV or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I did that at one point like. because our living room is like right next to the room where I'm recording now. But uh, mm -hmm. so I like the idea of like just leaving my PC here and streaming it. But there's enough of a delay where it's just kind yeah. of like not ideal. And because now I'm yeah. such a nerd for getting the right. Uh, uh, you know, resolution and stuff and the max mm. performance. It's like, oh, I'll just lug this thing over and, or yeah. get this like 20 foot long HDMI cord. I can just plug in yeah. and just, you know, blow yeah. a hole through my wall and just run it straight through or yeah. something. Well, you, I mean, you wait till you get yourself a nice like 1440p monitor or something. Cause it will, I mean, yeah. I don't know what it is like playing, playing like PC on a monitor is just, I, I don't know. It's just like so perfect. It goes so well together. Um, but yeah, the, yeah, it's really cool. You're able to, to, see those those rays i still haven't even tried ray tracing yet on mine i think i'll probably just wait really? for the ps5 <laughs> you yeah, got this, you know, with the cool rtx card now yeah yeah I've, well i'm just at least i use rtx voice that sort of make has made it go. worthwhile <laughs> yeah did you see they have an update now it's now called like uh nvidia uh broadcast or something where they will automatically and other apps do this but like they'll blur out the background for you pretty well and they'll add different like backgrounds and stuff. And they're using yeah. the whole RTX thing to do that as well, along with yeah. the whole RTX voice, but it's a whole suite of stuff now. Yeah, it's really cool. It's a really, really nice little addition. It's kind of like, because, you know, GTX or RTX cards are more expensive than, you know, by quite a lot than all the others. And it? so it's, it's kind of nice to get that. Like, it's like when you right. fly for a nice fancy air, airline or something, they give <laughs> you all like the, the wash bags and all that. So. It's nice to get that sort of treatment. <laughs> Have you been following the 3080, you know, debacle every time they, they drop the yeah. box, just pick it up. I think they just yeah. dropped the 3090 this week. And of course, and that's the more expensive, like the $1,500 yeah. card yeah, yeah, and yeah. everyone just, just not everyone really just bots, you know, pick them up. Yeah. 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 It's just like, it's, it's made me, it's put me off, like trying to keep up with everything. Like I've always been like, oh, I want to get the new stuff, but the whole PS5 and Xbox and everything and the new RTX cards is just, I'm just going to wait. I just can't deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep, uh, you know, watching it. But of course, knowing that there's no way I'm going to get these things. It's just the bots pick them up. I mean, what Elon Musk yeah. tried to warn us, you know, that the robots are taking over. The first thing they're doing is taking our graphics cards and selling them on yeah. eBay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's Skynet. <laughs> um, actually, that reminds yeah. me, I watched uh, the new Terminator the other day. The And, and I, I love like, the first two terminators i don't like any of the others but um it's pretty good the new one i thought i thought it was you know, it was all right yep same here i mean i'm a huge fan of the second one is constantly playing in my brain that's got to be my favorite yeah, yeah, movie yeah, yeah. ever and at my at my grave at my funeral it's going to be projected onto my tombstone just constantly playing uh with the soundtrack but uh yeah so yeah. i was always let down by everyone after that they always yeah. sucked and they're just trying to replicate yeah. that second but i feel yeah. like this new one wasn't as bad you know compared to those it's yeah. actually it's a great movie compared was, to those ones. It was sure. really enjoyable. Like, yeah. And, and it like, I think it just, it kind of did what like the force awakens did where it just kind of uses all the familiar stuff and just like, doesn't just is plays it really safe. Um, but yeah, I really liked it. I thought, yeah, I thought it was a good film. But yeah. It just reminded me when we we're talking about the bots or Skynet or something, <laughs> taking our graphics cards. <laughs> yeah. I always At least they'll that, look. Uh, good. There you go. Yeah. Um, I wonder, I don't think the newer Terminator made a bunch of money. So I, I don't know of like mm. what the, if there's a rush to make another one, which is a huge bummer. Yeah, I always wanted them not. to yeah. just throw that whole 
series just completely in the garbage and just start fresh like quit trying yeah. to throw arnold which i love arnold but quit trying to throw him back mm -hmm. into it somehow it's like just start yeah. from the absolute bottom and then build it up because it's, it's a cool universe if you can mm -hmm. make it work it's just yeah. the, the second was so awesome they're they've been trying to chase that dragon ever since yeah and you just can't replicate it that's what surprised me about the new one as well is like you know like you said they always lean really heavily on arnold it's like terminator 3 like the actors were just all trash except him um but mm -hmm. uh, in this new one i loved the new characters like i loved the new bad guy i loved the um the new like uh sort of carl reese kind of character um i, I yeah I've, i really really liked it i thought it was it was i mean it's not like gonna win any awards or anything but no. i just thought it was really good fun and I'm quite, I'm glad like if they're going to end it now and never make another Terminator film, that I'm fine. Like I, I, it's sort of your it's ending on a sort of high, so um, I'm just sort of happy about that because yeah, I, I love Terminator but hate most of the films. <laughs> yeah, same here. I mean, what they need to yeah. do with that second one, they had so so much, and that's a product of its time. But they relied so heavily on practical effects, like when they had to blow mm. stuff up, they actually just blew it up. Yeah, and uh, I think that was part of its strength is just using those practical effects. They stand the test of time. They need to give yeah. it to um, Christopher Nolan. He's he's also a fan of just like mm -hmm. doing practical effects. I think in the new Tenet movie, they just like actually um, move a plane, like crash a plane into a building. Like they just bought a like 747 and just blew it up for that scene. There's that scene in The Dark Knight mm -hmm. where they just implode that hospital in, you know, in real life. So like they almost need yeah. that kind of mind to tackle a reboot where he's just going to actually do everything on set and not just rely on CG to kind of like try and fix everything. Yeah, and I, I, I watched Terminator, because when we watched the new one, we watched the first two, and then that one sort of did a little like, marathon. And uh, the second one is just like, it still holds up now. Like, if that came out now, untouched, yeah. it would no one would say anything. Cause, and that was made in, what, 1991? So it's, Something like that, 93-ish, um, yeah, around there. Mad. Yeah. So it's just, it's, it's just mad how it can hold up hold up so well and um but yeah and, and there's that terminated game as well i don't know if you saw uh recently the one? it was like a first person shooter which is meant to be quite good as well but again i think people are just so fed up with terminator that they can't possibly think of something good about it but yeah apparently the new terminator <laughs> shoot was quite good as well and i've been thinking about trying it now that i i've sort of been there's been this little resurgence yeah there you go i've been waiting for a deal on that because i do remember when, when that came out and the team behind it their last one was was a really like critically panned. It just looked really bad. The game. It was like a yeah. they made Rambo, Rambo the movie thing. into a game. Yeah, yeah it looked real yeah. rough. And this one yeah. didn't. It actually looked pretty dope. And I was yeah. kind of waiting for. I think the reviews were fair, were were, were positive. Yeah. But um, if it's you know, I'm just waiting for it to drop to the right price where it's like yeah. where they pay me to play it. Then I'm gonna jump in mm -hmm. and try it. Well, I've heard it's got it, it, it like it has quite a good PC community because apparently on PC it's really good. I think it looks really mm. nice on PC as well. I don't know what the console versions are like, but um, and apparently it just feels really nice on PC. So, yeah, like you said, I think I'll, I'll wait for it to come up on Steam for like a five or something, and then yeah, I'd be happy to play through that because you can't. I think it's quite hard to make a bad Terminator game if it's just first person action. Um, you know, I, I, there, there's loads of brilliant Terminator games on PS2. Um, which I'd, I'd love to sort of see that that come back again. If they don't make any films, just make some Terminator games. That's fine. That's that's awesome. Yeah, give it to Naughty Dog and see what they what they do. Yeah, they just yeah. To like, yeah, just completely awesome, blow out yeah. the water and give it to like a AAA dev and just have them yeah have them work yeah. on it. Nice. Yeah. So playing some games. Um, that was really it for me as far as like what I played uh, this week. Jumped into more VR and doing this cool boxing thing in vr i'm digging that and actually my nephew tried that as well and punched the wall on accident <laughs> he was like moving around the room and just like didn't you know he just like went up uh, past the bounds it didn't warn him somehow and just like punched the wall and you know it's, he was fine but uh yeah. <laughs> it was just hilarious to see at the same time no, he was fine, fine but <laughs> yeah <laughs> a quick trip to the hospital you know two thousand dollars later he's all right yeah <laughs> Uh, so we can go into some of the news. We had this big uh, news drop, and this really isn't PlayStation related, but I think it's relative to you know what PlayStation does to react if needed or how it changes the industry in general. It's a huge deal. But this is uh, Microsoft's acquisition of Bethesda. So they paid $7.5 billion to acquire Bethesda. This was announced this week. Um, so there's uh, some bullet points here from Jeff Grubb over at VentureBeat. Xbox is acquiring Bethesda Studios and its parent company, ZeniMax Media. Bethesda is the publisher responsible for games like Elder Scrolls, 
uh, Skyrim, Fallout, and Doom. As part of the deal, Microsoft is paying $7.5 billion in cash for ZeniMax Media. That fee will get Microsoft all Bethesda's properties as well as eight studios with 2,300 employees. And those teams include uh, Bethesda Studios, id Software, ZeniMax Online, Arcane, Machine Games, Tango Gameworks. Um, so it's it's a lot to digest, but uh, even without getting into like some of the more details that have unfolded after that announcement, uh, what were your initial takes of seeing this, you know, pop up online when they made that mm. uh, announcement? I was, I thought it was really exciting. Um, I mean, firstly, because game, uh, you know, I, I'm a user of Game Pass, so it's really good for people who have that. Um, I think there's no doubt that Bethesda, all the sort of studios under Bethesda as well, except probably id Software, um, that, that, you know, their most recent games have been a bit um, iffy, I think, anyway. Um, you know, Machine Games and Arcane Studios collaborated to do the new Wolfenstein uh, Young Blood or whatever, and that wasn't very yeah. good. Um, obviously, Fallout 76, um, uh, Elder Scrolls is just like doesn't even exist anymore, pretty much. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think it's perfect in that respect because now they've got the backing of Xbox. Xbox will have probably um, entirely different expectations. They'll be able to give them money. Not, I don't know if they need the money or not, but. Uh, you know they'll be there to do that they'll be there to you know support them with their tech or whatever they need um so yeah i think it's a really really good thing um the i think that makes the future look quite bright for bethesda um and yeah it's it's uh, awesome i think you know seven and a half billion dollars is a lot of money but i think they must be sort of holding out for elder scrolls and you know these games that are going to make huge amounts of money um because i mean i i don't think these games are going to be exclusive to xbox i'm sure there probably will be some um maybe new ips or something that will be xbox exclusive but um i think the majority of that money is just on it on sort of exposure in a way because when you play these games on a ps4 it's going to have xbox game studios at the start um and it's just going to enforce xbox as this you know, this really big competitor, not in games consoles necessarily, but just in gaming in general, you know, they have their fingers in lots of pies. And um, yeah, I think it's a really, really good acquisition for them. Yeah, it's pretty nuts, uh, just the whole thing at large. But you mentioned some interesting topics where what does that mean going forward with with cross uh, cross platform support? Do they lock these into Xbox? I think you're right where I don't, th I don't think that's going to happen, especially since Xbox has kind of uh, put themselves this uh, generation in trying to be as friendly as possible with, you know, releasing their games everywhere mm -hmm. on PC and they still own Minecraft and that's everywhere. I mean, you can find that on any platform. So I think they're going to keep going with that mantra, at least with like the big releases, say the next Fallout, the next uh, Skyrim kind of thing. Those are going to be cross-platform because they want to also make some money back. But I think they're going to yeah. make great deals like they did announce this week that uh, Doom Eternal is coming to Game Pass uh, really October, mm. which is like next week yeah. or beginning yeah, of this week. I, yeah, I saw that actually. I think I, I'll give it a go. Because uh, I've always wanted to play Doom, but on PC, because I think they look like they'll lend themselves well to that. Um, but yeah, no, I think you're right. I think it's it's just really exciting. It's it's It was mad at first, you know, it was a big surprise. Um, but I think and a lot of people aren't sort of focusing on how good it is for Bethesda. You know, again, they're a company that have defin definitely been on the decline recently. And with sort of Doom Eternal probably propping it up a little bit. Um, sure. And I think for them to get the backing of a giant like Xbox is it's just huge for them. And I think like the games like Wolfenstein Dishonored from Arcane and Machine Games, I think whilst they were really well received, they again weren't able to reach, you know, these huge, huge audiences like Bethesda's other games, um, like Fallout and Elder Scrolls and everything. Uh, not that they should necessarily, but this will help get those games out onto Game Pass as well. And um you know, really show show off their talent. Yeah, I've been waiting for Xbox to make more moves like this because when they, I want to see them compete more. And so to they mm -hmm. haven't really acquired uh, something like this in a while. I think they spent, what, a year ago acquiring a bunch in one year, a bunch of different studios. Mm -hmm. And this is a huge get for them. And it just puts yeah. PlayStation on their toes, which then we see the benefit of of them acquiring more studios or trying to implement different features that are that are user friendly consumer friendly so that when they compete you know we just we benefit from that so <clears throat> excuse me i've been yeah. wanting to see them just make these moves of course I, I wish that they would go full blown and lock these you know as microsoft properties i know they won't and mm -hmm. that's a bummer for only playstation users but i, I want to see microsoft just be a bit more competitive and just kind of yeah. lock these things up at the same it's double where it's like at the same time i like that they're allowing these to be played 
you know, everywhere as much as possible. Uh, one of the big debates was what happens with um, Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo, which were PS5 exclusives, or at least mm-hmm. timed exclusives. They made the announcement beforehand, and they announced that they're going to honor that contract to yeah. be a timed exclusive with PS5. Yeah. So they're already doing these consumer-friendly, positive things, mm-hmm. and that's just kind of their mantra going forward. Um, but yeah. I just, yeah, I wanted to see them compete a bit more just to keep PlayStation on their toes. But uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a huge deal. There were some mm-hmm. uh, comparisons as far as pricing goes of other acquisitions in the news. So Sony, in comparison, paid $229 million for Insomniac in 2020, early 2020. Mm-hmm. And then they acquired Gaikai, which was that streaming service, which I guess PlayStation Now you know, runs off of. Mm-hmm. But that was for $380 million, which still doesn't touch yeah. the billion mark. And the closest is Microsoft no, buying Minecraft God. for $2.5 billion. I think... I think actually now you say that, I mean, 200 odd million for Insomniac, I think is a steal now, if you think about yeah, it. Sure. I don't think Bethesda really are, I know they own studios underneath them, but you know, Insomniac are two teams already. They've got Spider-Man, which is hugely profitable, Ratchet and Clank, which is another huge, huge game. Um, and yeah, so I, I'm not sure. Yeah, it might be a little bit much, but Microsoft, you know, they have the money to spend. Um, so that's yeah, the, they're a well-established the company. Thing. They are like a trillion-dollar uh, um, company in general. So it's like they have the money to put onto it. And I think the the properties that Bethesda owns are so strong that they could. I think they definitely will make their money back. And it's a matter of just kind yeah. of giving people a reason to jump on a Game Pass. The real battle this yeah. gen is going to be your next gen is going to be subscriptions, it, getting people locked yeah. in, and yeah. uh, not hoping that they spend sixty bucks once a year, but paying you know twenty bucks every month and just helping their yeah their whole bottom line uh, look even better. So I think that's definitely going to be the the race. And and what is that? How do you feel about it in comparison to, because we brought that up last time with that PlayStation, uh, I want to say PlayStation Classics collection or the PlayStation collection mm-hmm. where yeah. they have those uh, first, some third party, mostly first party, those PlayStation 4, mm-hmm. uh, big first party games that are free on PS5. How, did, how does that still compete now that you throw Bethesda into the mix with Game Pass? Is Game mm-hmm. Pass still just like leaps and beyond, leaps and bounds beyond yeah. where PlayStation is at? Yeah, I I think um, the PlayStation Plus sort of classics thing. I I don't think it's really that comparable to Game Pass, just because it's more like a a nice thing to have when you get your PS Five. It's kind of like just a little incentive for for when you first get it, um, just to have all these games. Whereas you know Game Pass, they get new games. You know the next whatever the next Elder Scrolls is, whatever it's called, that's going to be on Game Pass day one um when people who don't have game pass are going to have to pay what 70 pounds 80 dollars however much it is now um for that game so and that you know it's going to take you years to or probably about a year to pay that in game pass money so um right. you know it, it is a strong strong incentive to not maybe not not have a ps5 because ps5 still have that pull from their exclusives but it's a strong incentive for somebody to get game pass uh just non just full stop you know it's a huge huge uh buy and yeah it's gonna you know i'm gonna be conflicted now when when these big games come out bethesda games you know new wolfenstein because i'll i'll have the choice to either pay 70 pounds for it on ps5 or i can just download it for six pound a month from on my pc um so it's gonna and there's gonna be if if i if i'm in that position there's gonna be lots of more people like that uh, in a similar position so yeah it's huge yeah, that's what they they want you to make that internal struggle. They want you to go, you know what? I have this console, but yeah. it's a better deal for me if I if I move yeah. over here. So I mean, they're already the gears are moving in their direction. So it's a yeah. great it's a great Is move. You... What do you think for? Oh, sorry. No, no, okay, okay. There's a lot of debate whether PlayStation. This may be fanboy speaking, but like, does PlayStation need to react? Do they need to acquire some big studio to kind of like shuffle and go? Oh yeah, we're doing stuff too behind the scenes. Do they need to react in some way or unlock some kind of feature, some kind of consumer friendly move in reaction to this deal? Or do they just keep going, focusing on their strong first parties? I don't think so. I don't think they need to do anything, you know, drastic or anything. I think, uh, you know, this is a definitely a, a good thing for Microsoft, and they're going to definitely reap benefits from it. But I think PlayStation have enough anyway. You know, before. Th- before this, it was kind of like, you know, Game Pass is great, but PlayStation 5's exclusives are worth worth it every time. And I still think they are. Um, so, you know, this isn't going to stop anybody from getting a PS5, but it's going to probably get people to get Xbox Game Pass somehow, whether it's on their PC or Xbox. I don't think it's going to affect PlayStation 5 at all. I think it's going to positively affect Xbox. And I think that's probably what they're going for. I don't think they're trying to you know, diminish PS5 sales. They're not trying to make people switch over to Xbox. 
um it, it's they're, they're just trying to increase the the sort of attra- attractiveness of their brand and they're doing that really really well um so no i don't think ps5 needs to necessarily do anything i think um maybe maybe look at making ps now more attractive um, i don't know but no I, I think that you know as soon as these big studios like naughty dog or and and when we start seeing more of god of war 2 and we start seeing more of horizon 2 i think that it's all going to just be forgotten about and that's what that's why these console wars are so stupid because it swings and roundabouts someone's on top when there's a big game coming out and then the other one's on top when there's a big game coming out it's just how it works and everything else is just reactionary and people just trying to you know one up people and you see lots of playstation fans on twitter at the moment um acting like you know this doesn't matter because they're still coming to ps5 but it does matter because oh, yeah. they're going to be cheaper somewhere else um so yeah i don't know it, it's it's just one of those things isn't it in a few months of time or even a year time um this will all be forgotten about and we'll be on to the next sort of competition whatever that is <laughs> Yeah, true. Um, so yeah, it's a huge, huge deal. They made that announcement this week. Pretty nuts. We'll go on to our next one here about The Last of Us Day, which is today. Uh, Naughty Dog rebrands Outbreak Day amid coronavirus crisis. This is a, a Sammy Barker of Sammy Barker of PushSquare.com. Naughty Dog has branded 26th of, of September, the fictional date referring to the spread of the Cordyceps virus in The Last of Us lore as Outbreak Day for some time now. But amid the coronavirus pandemic, the developer has committed to a name change as part of a Twitter statement. The studio said that it will now name the event The Last of Us Day. So as far as the day or the announcements that happened today, there's, I guess, a few more that they're waiting to announce later today. But some of the stuff they announced were more retail stuff, but there's a Last of Us 2 board game which uh, is cool. I guess it's a tabletop game. It's made by yep. the company Come On or CMON. They've done the Bloodborne uh, board game and a God of War card game. And uh, so that, that's been announced. There's also a, which is super dope. There's a re-edition uh, of the soundtrack to The Last of Us 2 on vinyl. So Mondo, the oh, company's nice. handling that. And I can't wait to, the pre-orders drop today at 9 a.m. So I'm interested to see. I'm not even sure what the art looks like yet, but they're redoing the art on that cover as well. And there's a new PlayStation 4 theme, which has the beach from the game in there, uh, which is free for everybody. And of course, some like uh, vinyl um, or actual like uh, sculptures, tiny sculptures that they made of Ellie and and um, Joel, different scale models, and then that you can buy now as well. So a bunch of more retail stuff. There was a sale on PSN, which I finally bought. They had a hat on sale that just has the Firefly, Firefly logo. I got that online. Everything was on sale, PlayStation related or Sony uh, Last of Us related. Got that. Uh, as well but um yeah i guess it makes sense for them going back to them changing the name of course you want to change the name because it's like we live in a now in a pandemic it's it's a last of us all the time now so it's like we gotta kind of rebrand that name a little bit yeah so that that, it hasn't like properly kicked off yet has it i think it's like maybe like three out like or a couple of hours or so is it they're doing something or because i'm hoping that there's more sort of news <laughs> yeah I mean, you know, same I mean. here where i was hoping that maybe we'd get a little inkling of the multiplayer that's coming down which you have to imagine mm-hmm. it's like a year from now at least maybe something yeah. like that they said not to keep your hopes up but uh, as yeah. far as what they've announced officially the some retail stuff but the, you're right it's the yeah. whole day so they still have time they still oh, have okay, stuff cool. that they haven't announced yet yeah so we'll see if they're waiting for some kind of bombshell announcement um which yeah. would be insane i was hoping that sony would kind of show something of that off just to also another reason to give people uh, you know a reason to get the ps5 showing how the mm-hmm. multiplayer is going to be insane yeah. i guess you don't want to lock that to ps5 but to show people that that's mm-hmm. down the line if you side mm-hmm. with playstation something to that degree yeah yeah i think um i think you're right i, I mean I, I was hoping or still am hoping for maybe like a, a ps5 free upgrade announcement or um you know, or because because what I was thinking as well is you know how they've done sort of Miles Morales, the Spider Man game, where if you buy the Ultimate Edition, you get Spider Man. Um, I, I was sort of wondering whether they were going to do like a free upgrade Last of Us Two, or if you buy the Ultimate Edition on PS Five, it will come with the multiplayer or something. I don't know, um, but I wasn't sure if they they were going to sort of try and get us with one of those like Resident <laughs> Evil Three. You have to buy project resistance as well kind of things yeah. <laughs> to uh, just make more money which i wouldn't be surprised that's what that's what playstation do to us but um, yeah, for sure yeah i i'd love to see some multiplayer today but you know like they said that I've, i'll try not to keep my hopes up but i probably will keep them up because that's what i do <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's been what three months since the last of us two launched so whenever they were able to split the team and they were working i imagine on last of us two right up until the the end of it because they had to keep pushing it down the line 
So I don't know where yeah. they are with that multiplayer. Maybe it's way too early to see it if they've only been able to officially start in the last three months. But uh, it's very interesting where, how do they handle, because you'd have to imagine, of course, it's a race to some kind of Last of Us 2 remaster for PS5. So how do they handle that? That game is three months old now. It's way too, it seems way too early to try and like charge people for some kind of upgrade because we just yeah. spent a yeah. uh, full retail price on it. So, and that's our next article is how they're handling the Spider-Man transition. But that's a game that's about three years old now. I feel, I feel like it's fair. And they're offering this. Yeah. This whole, like, the remaster is free if you get the Miles Morales mm -hmm. edition or the Ultimate Edition. Mm -hmm. um, so how do they handle, say, like, Ghost of, Ghost of Tsushima and Last of Us 2 that just recently launched? How do they handle switching those over to PS5? Or do we have to wait a full year for them to announce mm -hmm. some kind of, you know, remastered version? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see. Either way, it seems like the yeah. internet's not going to be happy because it's never happy. Yeah, well, I mean, either way, the, the, the PS4, you know, PS4 games are fully backwards compatible, so... Um, right. we'll be able to play them. And, that, and I think what people are forgetting is because well, I don't have a PS4 Pro. So these PS4 games I'm going to be playing on my PS5 will automatically be better because they'll be the Pro version um, of the game gotcha. because you're now playing it on something. And I think people are forgetting that um, you, you'll, you know, you'll definitely get the Pro, the, you know, the best version of the PS4 game. Um, so with that in mind, you can still play Spider-Man on PS5. You still play Last of Us 2 on PS5. It would be nice to get these upgrades that have been tweaked, you know, whether whether that's just turning up texture settings or whatever. Um, but yeah, you're right. Last of Us 2 is three months old. Ghost of Tsushima is even newer. Um, I imagine that any upgrade stuff for the PS5 will already be done or will at least have been in mind when developing it. I think Spider-Man's a bit too old now. I think they've already said that the reason they're charging for it is because... They had to go in, touch things up. They had to remodel parts of the city. They had to do all sorts to make it, you know, up to Miles Morales's quality. Because I'm sure that's probably what they're trying to do. Um, so, as much as it would be nice to have got a free PS5 upgrade, I don't think there's really much there. I don't think there's a lot to be annoyed about. I think it's just the same as Last of Us One, Last of Us One Remastered. You know, Last of Us One Remastered was a far, you know, different game to the PS3 version. Um, and I think that this will just be the same. I don't. I think again, people are just trying to find something to panic about. And I've seen lots of articles saying how it's so confusing, and it's really not like if you want to get the upgraded version, you buy Miles Morales. If you don't, and you play a PS4 version, it's um, yeah. I don't know. I think this is just one of those things where it's just people are just trying to make a meal out of something that isn't really <laughs> worth making a meal out of. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think you're, I, say, I share the same uh, thoughts on that. So speaking of that, we have the details we can go into of that uh, rigmarole, the whole debate right now with the Spider-Man Miles Morales yeah. remaster edition. So this is from Kotaku. Sony confirms there's no free PS5 upgrade for PS4 Spider-Man for players. This is Ian Walker of Kotaku. As of now, there's no upgrade path to get the graphically upgraded Spider-Man remastered on PS5 for players who already own the original Spider-Man on PlayStation 4. According to a statement provided by Kotaku by Sony, the company confirmed the company confirmed that the only ways to get Spider-Man, um, a Marvel Spider-Man remastered, are buying the Miles Morales Ultimate Edition for PS5. Additionally, if you buy Miles Morales for PS4, you can play the PS5 version of that game at no additional cost, and you can purchase the additional paid upgrade to gain access to the Spider-Man Remastered. Now, they haven't said what that paid upgrade would be. So if you buy Miles Morales on PS4, you get the automatic upgrade to PS5, which is dope. Uh, they just haven't said how much that uh, is going to be. Um, oh, yeah. sorry. So that's for the Spider-Man Remastered. Okay, so you can pay to get that remastered, or you can pay for the yeah. Ultimate Edition, which has it all unlocked for PS5. Yeah, yeah it's like a um, yeah. And it looks like so there are no plans currently to offer Marvel Spider-Man Remastered as a standalone game for PS5 is what I assume there. If you plan to continue yeah. from where you left off on PS4, you're out of luck as it looks like the two games will be separate entities, meaning your current gen save won't be compatible, um, which is, I think that's fair. I mean, it's it's kind of, it's not like you flip a switch and the stuff just works and this is, you right. know, they're different models are building. So it's kind of, um, yeah. it's just insane to require them to offer that. Maybe with like PlayStation yeah. Plus saves, you know, you can save in the cloud, but still it's like different mm -hmm. code, I imagine. So it's just not easy to just, you know, transfer stuff over, as which is why that's yeah. happening. Well, I mean, you know, people are saying Sony are really anti-consumer and all this, but if you look at all of their games, Spider-Man, for example, had no microtransactions, nothing yeah. like that. Um, they were releasing costumes, even ones fans were asking for, like the, the Sam Raimi thing. Yep. Um, they obviously released DLC, but far later, and that and that was quite meaty and and obviously everything. 
Um, and it's the same with everything else. Every single Sony exclusive doesn't have microtransactions. They're designed around being fun to play. Um, so I don't really know where this anti-consumer things come from. Um, I mean, I know they used to be very anti-consumer, but I don't know. I don't really see that anymore. Um, and I think this makes sense. Again, they've been really clear that Spider-Man PS4 has had to go under significant reworking to get it to the level of Miles Morales. Um, and that, that's even more clear when you can see that you can buy Miles Morales for PS4 and you get a free upgrade because it's already been done. The labor's already been done. Uh, the work's already been there. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I just don't I, I just don't see the problem with it. I mean, they've been honest about why it's going to cost money. And I think that's fair enough. And then for the exact same reasons, the, the whole you can't continue your save. Well, it's obviously a far different game in terms of what they've done to it. So again, it makes it makes sense, and I don't know why you'd even be in a position where you'd have a save that you'd need to carry on on a PS5 version. You know, you can still play the PS4 version. I don't know why you'd start it if you hadn't started it yet, and the PS5 so close. I don't know. It's just again, it's just people trying to find like little niggly issues when I I just don't think there are any uh, personally. Yeah, we kind of find. When, when everything's announced on paper, we just kind of go through the details and go, oh, I don't like that because what if I yeah. somehow have the need to do this thing? It's like, oh, but you don't. Yeah. So what are we yeah, really complaining exactly. about? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unless there's yeah. people out there that this, you know, com- they're in the right situation where it's it's a negative for them. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of tough to... Yeah, but, that, to... Yeah, but, but remember, this, yeah, but this is how like the world works, isn't it? The minorities don't get a say. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I mean, <laughs> we push down and it's hard to get a voice. It's a democracy. It's a... So, <laughs> I did include just for context, like uh, it was announced the same week that, um, and maybe this, a lot of the backlash is because Xbox is doing these things where a lot of stuff is free. And so people are mm-hmm. kind of now expecting that for Sony. Uh, but for context, Gears Tactics, Gears 5 will get a d- day and date smart delivery update, including all Xbox Series X features, plus new content free of charge. This is true even if you own the game on Windows and Steam. So this will all be transferred over to Xbox Series X and S. Um, so they are doing, you know, Xbox is finding this path for a lot of their, their first party games where there's like a free transition and it just works. So it seems like it's it's yeah. possible if I get, but you might have to intend it from the beginning. And I don't know if Sony intended yes. on doing yeah. that, that, that work from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I think if you look at Gears Tactics, Gears 5, I play both of those games uh on my pc at ultra in 1440p that's what it will look like on the new xbox so it's already there that game already exists and they just need to you know release it or whatever optimize it for for a different platform um but you know those textures exist people are already playing those games at that fidelity um whereas games like spider-man they exist only on that hardware if they want to be put and upscaled then that that's a whole thing um so so yeah i think that, but that but, that, but again that's that's not that's nothing against xbox that's a really good thing that that shows how you know that that's why it's okay that they've got these um what they i don't I can't think of the right word but like these different variations of of the console because their games are always on pc so they're always having to be scaled for lots of different factors anyway so i think it's a clever sort of way to have it but that is how it's different to ps4 and ps5 i think anyway yeah, that's a good point. Um, I know early on I had uh, issues with Xbox being so friendly with PC just for the fact that there was less of a reason to play on Xbox because if you have a PC, you have access to all these games. But now on the other side of it, the benefit is all their games are scalable, just like you mentioned. So they have the benefit of the work's been done. They can transition it over to their next-gen consoles because they have all these different variations of their game. So it paid off for them, really. Uh, and Sony yep. is locked into their just their their two different models, and they're switching entire generations. So it's a lot of work. I guess it's it's also um, we kind of forget about the time with like the cell processor and the PlayStation Three going to PlayStation Four. That was a whole yeah. mess, and there was like almost no yeah. way to you know transition that stuff. So at least we have mm-hmm. now like PC architecture in the PS Four, so it's possible to switch these games over to PS Five when in the past it was not. So at the very least, yeah. we can remember that. And back in the day, this was not a thing that they could have done. And so they're yeah. in the right mode. They're switching gears where these things are more PC friendly in general, where it's like they can now scale these things and move them around, which before they could not at all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think, you know, people forget how bad Sony were when the PS3 came out. And um, I think they've definitely, they must have learned from their lesson. And I, I just don't see 
I know that they they're under a microscope. I think everything is on sort of because of Twitter and everything now. But um, yeah, I, the, nothing has actually alarmed me really so far. Um, I just think Xbox are doing a lot of good, and I think just mm-hmm. inherently because of how people are, they then are like, oh, that means PlayStation's doing bad. When it's just right. like, no, it's just some sometimes they do good things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let's go on our next one here. This is a rumor, but we can pick this apart. I'm not sure if you're a big uh, Bloodborne, Bloodborne fan, but there's a rumor Bloodborne Remaster is real, coming to PS5 and PC. This is Robert Ramsey of Push Square. <clears throat> Whispers of a Bloodborne Remaster have been doing the rounds for what feels like an eternity. Anyway, aside from some sudden retail listings, which rarely amount to anything, it's been a while since we've heard anything juicy about the supposed remaster. Enter Red Gaming Tech on YouTube, a channel that is promising track record when it comes to leaks. They mostly deal with hardware information rather than software, but it's clear that they have access to accurate sources, at least to some extent. Apparently, the same source that told Red Gaming Tech about the Metal Gear Solid remake, which is also a rumor, also claims that the long-rumored Bloodborne remaster is absolutely real, and it's coming to both PS5 and PC. It's allegedly quite far along in development, and it'll come with additional content. As is the case with any rumor like this, our only option is to wait and see what happens. Um, I feel like if not a remaster, they've got to dip back into that Bloodborne well, because that was a hugely successful game. People love it, and that's a property that they own. I feel like we need to see some kind of Bloodborne 2 or at the very least a remaster going into PS5. That would be uh, a slam dunk. I mean, I'm not sure what's holding them back. Yeah, I, I definitely believe it. Um, I think it's been rumored sort of a while about the PC version, hasn't it? So mm. I think since like the game came out, really. Um, so yeah, I definitely believe it. I'm sure that's probably in the works. Um, yeah, it's really cool. I, I, it's a game I definitely want to go back to because I got to um, the sort of like end of it and then I just gave up. Um, so I'd like to go back to it. It's a really cool game. Um, but um, it reminds me, uh, me and sort of a friend of mine were saying that when they announced all the P- PlayStation Plus classics and they showed Bloodborne, um, it looked like completely different. Like it looked way better than I remember than we both remembered it. So huh. um, I don't know if that's just our eyes collectively being bad, but um, <laughs> it did look like Bloodborne had had a little spice added to it. Um, so interesting whether or not there's there's anything there but yeah i wonder if because i think they've said that those playstation 4 uh or the plus collection is just like the standard playstation 4 uh model or maybe the ps5 version you know that's, that's transferring over and so i would hope that they take advantage of the hardware and do some kind of like little graphical upgrade but or they hold that off at least with bloodborne's case for that full-blown remaster and the whole pc side of it I mean, I think that's more credible now, the fact that we're on the other end of having Horizon on PC now, uh, Death Stranding on mm-hmm. PC now. So Sony is making those those moves, which just like Xbox is going to help them be able to scale their games and transfer them over to next gen and all that. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, this is a property that I think they've slept on for a while. It's been, what, like six mm-hmm. years or something since Bloodborne came out? Yeah. They they really need to tap back into that. Yeah, and I, th- I, I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the Dark Souls community on Steam is huge. I'm I think the PC uh, player base of the Dark Souls games are massive. So to give them Bloodborne as well, we'll just it will just print Sony money. So um, right. yeah, I, I think it's definitely something that they're they're looking at. And I think we've said before about Horizon. Um, Horizon was a great game to take on and put it on PC because it's quite a you know standalone sort of series for Sony. It's not what it was. Guerrilla's first foray into that franchise and. Um, you know, it's definitely expendable is maybe not the best word to use, but um, <laughs> it's the best game to bring across. Um, and just like how they probably did that to help promote the second game being only on PS5, maybe they'll do that of Bloodborne as well. Maybe there'll be a sequel to it um, that will be a PS5 exclusives uh, or something like that. Um, but yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping. I really want them to just go yeah. and remaster everything, especially yeah. I feel like less... <laughs> Less hopeful for a Metal Gear Solid remake. Although uh, in the news, I didn't have it pulled up, but in the news recently this week, uh, Konami uh, ported a bunch of the Metal Gear Solid games to PC. And it's just like the original PC game. So I think it's the first Mm -hmm. three Metal Gear Solids that are on PC now that you can buy. I think it's uh, through good old games or GOG.com. So the fact that Mm Konami is now letting these games come out of the vault, they're on PC, gives me hope that they're willing to, you know, to actually think about these properties, this, this gold mine they're sitting on, and let someone yeah. remaster it. They don't have to do any of the work. Just you know, give the rights to some some dev. Let them work on it and remaster it, and that's going to print your money as well. Like that's such a huge yeah. franchise. Just bring it back to life. Yeah. 
and Silent Hill as well. I think we should. I think we mm-hmm. should be the bosses of video games, so we can just be <laughs> like, look, this is going to make you money. I promise. Yeah, I wonder if there's just like uh, hesitation because they don't want to spend money and they make so much money on pachinko machines and they they're just like okay. not interested. But and that's fine. Yeah. But then just kind of like sell these properties or make your money. Maybe that mm-hmm. could be Sony's next acquisition. You know, buy if not Konami, like these these properties that you know were yeah. traditionally like Sony games and kind of bring them back into that family. Mm-hmm. Uh, who knows? There's reasons that are holding it up. I'm not sure why. There's just, you know, there's politics behind the scenes possibly, but yeah, they need to get on that. Now, our next one here, Callum, is just some more updates on the PS5 availability. Um, you mentioned that you, over the week, you have finally acquired your your pre-order, right? Uh, which which yes. outlet was, was that through? Uh, it was Giacomo, which is like a big um, retailer in the UK uh, owned by sort of like JD, which I think... Uh, I can't remember what else they own, but they're like some big sort of, they're mostly a clothing company, but they obviously had some. But I've actually got a very sad story about that is uh, oh, they, no, actually o- they actually overcommitted and cancelled my order. Are uh, you so serious? I no longer have a PS5, yeah. Damn. God, yeah, well, okay, we'll, we'll transition sad. to this article. That's Hopefully there's some hope <laughs> for you very soon. So <laughs> PS5 retailers appear to have fewer digital editions for pre-order. This is Adam Bankhurst of IGN. According to various reports, retailers appear to have fewer PS5 digital edition consoles than the standard $100 more expensive PS5 with a disk drive. Ars Technica was able to confirm the initial pre-order allocations for nine GameStop locations across the U.S., discovering that roughly 24, 24% of the stock available at these locations was taken up by the digital edition, with the remaining 76% of the standard edition. On the topic of PS5 availability, Sony CEO Jim Ryan has recently said that there will be more PS5 units available at launch than there were for the release of the PS4 in 2013. So that is hopeful that at least at launch they'll have a bunch. And uh, just recently in the news, so Walmart and GameStop have opened up pre-orders back up during the week. And there was even uh, an attempt from Sony to, they emailed people back again. So if you didn't get in on that initial pre-orders through Sony, they sent out more emails saying that you can jump back in line. Uh, this is on like Friday or Thursday. So you have to you had to sign up through their website, which I think was US only, to be notified mm-hmm. through Sony. So it, they yeah. are, there's, there's hope there's the, the gears are turning. It's not just that initial like window of time that we thought, you know, at the yeah, beginning. Yeah. So there is hope out there for you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll get one eventually. I'm not too worried. And that the whole sort of more PS5 units of launch is, is sort of nice to hear, but, um, cause I can't remember what the PS4 was even like. Cause I think I've said before, when they announced PS4, they actually said when it was going up for pre-order, uh, yeah. which they still haven't managed to do with PS5. Um, and so they were like, yeah, it's ready to pre-order now. I went on, pre-ordered it, and that was that. So I never knew how hard they were to get after that or when they were launched. So I'm hoping they're easy to get because then that means the PS5 will be even easier to get. But um, I'm hopeful. I'm just sort of um, waiting now and just hoping that everyone will order theirs online. And then when they're out in stores, I can just go waltz yeah. up to <laughs> somewhere and grab one. <laughs> but I'm sure the reality <laughs> will be very different. How do you feel about, so some of these retailers, at least with like GameStop in the States, they're, I don't know if they're consciously or that's just what Sony has allocated to them, but they're only supplying, uh, or not only, but they're supplying more of the disc version than the digital. Is that them just kind of being grumpy of the fact that digital is kind of going to run them out of business and they want to sell less of those and more of the disc versions? Do you think there's like a conscious decision to sell more of the disc versions or that's just what Sony has given them? Yeah, I'm not sure actually. It could it could be to do with um, retailers wanting to, but I'm not sure if they would. I don't know. Would retailers want to? I don't know. It's a weird one. I'm not. I'm not sure there. It might be from Sony, but I would have thought Sony would have been pushing the digital one more, to be honest. Um, but then again, it is a hundred dollars uh, cheaper, which is, and it is a very very cheap price for what you're getting. So yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe that's why I didn't get mine because the stock's more limited than the digital ones because they're the ones I'm going for. Right. Um, so hopefully I'll I'll get one, but uh, if yeah, I have think... to resort to getting a disc one, then so be it. <laughs> you think there is actually an incentive for Sony to sell the digital because with that you're only buying games through their marketplace and they get a cut every time you're buying something on PlayStation yeah. Network versus when you buy at the retail you pay for whatever deal they've already made to get the disc version in store. So there is yeah. an incentive for them to sell that that digital, and with the disc uh, being available at retailers. That was just my first thought that the fact that once you buy your digital PS5 from them, 
you see you say see you later and like maybe i'll come back for controller in a couple of years but like you're not mm. going to buy media through them anymore so there's no more incentive to keep going to the store yeah they made the the, the quick buck the 400 dollars, but they're not going to see you as a, cu- a customer anymore so i wonder if they're mm-hmm. trying to just kind of promote more people getting discs so they can you know keep keep the lights on and stuff but uh i wonder if it's a conscious decision on their end yeah i'm not sure i mean <clears throat> I'd, I'd like to i'd like to just get one now because it's uh, <laughs> it'd, it'd just be it'd just be nice. That would be a very nice thing. But I might have to wait wait till like Christmas stock or something, which will be a pain. But um, either way, I'll, I've got my PC, so that that should uh, get me through. And I've still got my PS4 anyway. This is what you know yeah. I've, I've been thinking. I've still got my PS4, and and you you can play your digital library on the PS5, can't you, from your PS4? I believe so. Yeah, because they've, uh, right. and that's one of the topics after this, but uh, the external hard drives that are supported on PS4, you can plug those mm-hmm. into PS5 only being able to play the PS4 game. So you can carry yeah. over your actual collection yeah. and there's a whole PlayStation Plus collection as well. Awesome. On top of that, yeah. yeah, you can transfer everything over. Yeah, because I think I've got like 230 games on my PS4 or something like on my yeah. library. So um, so yeah, that's perfect then. That, that's, that's ideal. And I don't, I don't even mind if they're not touched up or anything because... You know, like I said, they'll be they'll be touched up to me because I don't have a pro, and I just want to use that new controller as well. Um, Very so true. I, I don't mind. Yeah, you mentioned the holidays. Hopefully, Santa, you know, drops your PS Five down the chimney oh, or something. No, my parents <laughs> don't just... love me that much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully, he just launches it from the top of the roof straight down the chimney. Yeah, <laughs> no yeah I think I think the last time my parents loved me that much was when I was about nine. So. Um, well. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll have to I'll have to get one myself. <laughs> <laughs> so we mentioned briefly that whole external, you know, hard drive ability to take your PS4 games to PS5. On the topic of external memory, that's kind of <clears throat> excuse me. That's gonna be the next hurdle is how do we expand the memory on these devices? So the PS5 has a terabyte, or it's technically like 980 gigabytes yeah. or something. It's like they give you the full actual like usable space on the on the box, mm-hmm. but with uh, Xbox Series S, that's a 500 gig model. So how much is it gonna cost to expand the memory like we've been used to? The whole benefit of next gen going forward is that they're using these crazy fast SSDs. And so mm-hmm. the downside to that is they're gonna be crazy expensive for a while. So yeah. this was uh, released this week and it's I think it's just gonna give us a fair comparison to what PS5 is gonna charge. But the uh, we got the external hard drive upgrade, the solid state drive for the PS, or sorry, for the Xbox Series X and S so this is a terabyte that you can, this is this is approved by Microsoft. It's made through Seagate. It's going to be $220 in the U.S. for this special hard drive that just plugs in and has the the right speeds that they require to go forward with next gen. Uh, I think we're going, to, we're going to see the same prices with Sony. So Sony isn't going with their own first party stuff, but they're allowing third party manufacturer, manufacturer support. But it has to be those crazy fast SSDs that they're using as well. So the same comparison mm-hmm. is this one from Samsung that just uh, recently came out, which is also about 220 bucks in the US for a terabyte. So it looks like if we're gonna try and expand our memory going forward, at least for the next few years, it's gonna be uh, pretty pricey, at least like half the price of the console. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't imagine it's gonna be cheap, but um, I think a lot of the speed that comes from, definitely the PlayStation's SSD comes from that, uh, the new architecture they're using. Like, So I think mm. that's a lot to do with how the system is engineered and you know the software that that sort of keeps it all together and and make things you know you know like your drivers and everything um and i think that allows the ssds to work in a certain way with you know the, all the rest of the the console so um i don't know how we can sort of get like an idea for the price because i don't think it's, it's the ssd themselves that are you know super fast and or i mean of course they are but i think it's more what happens after the ssd's in and everything's working together um so i'm hoping it'll be you know i'm sure it'll still be expensive but i'm hoping it'll be at least affordable um because yeah like you said um 825 gig i think it is just probably isn't enough um for a lot of people um, i mean i don't i don't mind personally because you know i still have my 500 gigabyte hard drive in my ps4 and that's fine because I only, I'm only ever playing like two or three games at a time and it can easily fit two or three games on. Um, so it, it doesn't bother me too much. But yeah, I mean, for some people who don't have as good internet connection um, and I think this, the whole internet discussion is a lot more pre- prevalent here because downloading a hundred gig game takes long for most people. Um, yeah. So it is important to have all this storage. But 
yeah, I'm hoping it will not be too bad at first, but like you said, it will probably eventually level out and should be more affordable. I mean, it's not it's it's not been too long where normal SSDs have become affordable. So yeah, um, it, it's still new tech, and um, I think at the end of the day, if if you're really if you really care about your console being super fast and everything, then just delete your games and you're done with them. <laughs> I can't do that, Calum. I'm such a weirdo where it's like, I want <laughs> all the games accessible and I'll probably never play them. Like I have so many games on my external yeah. hard drive on PS4. Yeah. I'll never get to them, but I like the fact that they're there. And so I'm just now yeah, a big stickler true. for that kind of thing. But yeah. um, it's a bummer that, so at least with the, on Sony's end, the ones that they've announced that, that they'll support as far as those uh, M.2 uh, SSDs, yeah. they have to be a certain speed and it's like five gig to seven gig uh, mm. write, read write speeds. So those are the ones that are at least right now currently in the market. They're about two hundred bucks for like a terabyte. Okay. So yeah, that's where yeah. the whole price comparison goes. But yeah, you're, I'm hoping that very soon they'll be they'll be cheaper. Um, I'm wondering yeah. as well. Uh, Microsoft has the little port on the back for their series consoles where you just plug in this mm. little. It looks like just a standard yeah. memory card plugs in, and it and it works. I wonder with the PS5 they have announced you have to take off the shell to get that M.2 mm. drive in there, or how is that gonna work? Uh, I'm yeah. I'm curious, but uh, you know yeah. either way it'll work. The, the PS4 hard drive was super easy to swap out in and out, so I'm yeah. sure it'd be something like that. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think it's not it's not hard. I think it sounds more daunting than than it is. Um, and yeah, they make it super easy. But yeah, the, the little memory card thing I saw for Xbox was really cool, actually. Um, I didn't think memory cards would be coming back, but uh, right. you know, to be fair, I, I think right now we could probably use them because they're they're so easy, and you could like take them to your friend's house so easily, like fit them in your wallet or something. Um, uh, yeah, well, I, we need more memory cards. I don't know why. Just <laughs> bun off these hard drives and SSDs. Let's, let's have memory cards back. Yep. I never bring remember there being any like speed issues disc. with them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, bring back GameCube <laughs> discs and memory cards. <laughs> Those are just neat. I always just loved how tiny they were, but they never worked yeah. on anything else. But like, I just loved no. you know, having the cool little disc. But yeah nice and you could like you could like sit them on like little pc disc trays in the little like center bit where because yeah because i never i never knew it when i was little i never knew you could put because sometimes you'd buy like um i don't know some software or something and they'd have like a one of those little gamecube discs and you'd have to yeah. like sit it in that little imprint in your disc drive <laughs> and i always used to be scared it would like fall out and do do something in my computer but um that's because i was i was a stupid child <laughs> yeah same here yeah it's it's yeah they, they yeah. supported that that size you know from it seems like from the get-go so that was just certain certain yeah. ones would actually print on those little discs and and it was yeah. a thing um it's pretty wild but um yeah so we'll we'll see you know how the whole external device or external memory race goes um i i do want to when it becomes cheap enough have like a two terabyte three terabyte ssd just so i can be i can sleep at night at ease knowing all my games are on the console itself and I could just be fine. I think be, it might have been the transition from like collecting the actual discs or the actual like um, box games because I transitioned yeah. out of that and went digital. My brain went, okay, but I just want to have them all on this thing. And I want to be able yeah. to see them and swap through the memory or the, the menu rather. So I wonder if that's where, why I have this need to like have them all at once is like, because I've collected so long in my life, I just want also to collect on a hard drive and just have them ready to go. Yeah. But I'll never play these, do you these have like, games that I have. Do you have like the folders and everything categorizing all your games? I don't just because it's a whole thing to try and do that on <laughs> PS4. I think they do yeah, I gonna, support. I was going to say that that's, that's quite, that's some psycho behavior when like people <laughs> share their PS4 UIs and they've got like just folders that like go off screen. It's like, oh my God, I can't even <laughs> sort my life out, let alone my bloody UI on PS4. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need some of that uh, psycho, you know, mentality to help me organize my regular life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Job. Well, yeah, that's that's it for us for this week. Um, anything coming up that you're excited to play? You're just going to jump back into that game you're reviewing? Um, yeah, I'm going to play some more of that. Um, I need I really want to finish Last of Us 2 as well. Just get that over and done with. Um and Baldur's Gate 3 is coming out soon, the new D&D. &D, oh, um, is it the RPG beta that's coming thing. out soon too? Or like a, yeah. Yeah. Or something that news was pushed. It was meant to come out on the 30th. I think it's now coming out uh, like early October. I think it was like pushed back like a week or something. I think yeah. so. Really, really looking forward to playing that. Um, you know, I love D&D &D and I've never really played Baldur's Gate. So, And with this looking as good as it does as well, I think it would just be really nice for me to play an actual video game where I can like see all the things that, 
you know I've I've read about but like actually come to life on screen I'm really really excited about that nice yeah I'm, I'm interested to see that Baldur's Gate 3 is a huge property and so I want to see how people mm. digest that and uh, some of the footage yeah. I've seen that game looks crazy beautiful too so I'm not like traditionally yeah. a fan of that style of gameplay yeah. but I do want to see like what people think of it and maybe yeah. it's enough for for a Joe Schmo like me to actually like try it for the first time but we'll see yeah. what the what the reviews yeah and it's like. uh larian studios who make uh divinity original sin which i've never right. played but it's meant to be like one of the top top rpgs so yep. it's in good hands um and yeah really really excited to to play that but other than that i don't know i don't really know what else is coming out to be honest it's probably oh i've got crash 4 haven't we at some point that's true that's soon, soon. i don't know the yeah. exact date i want to say that was september october so yeah maybe early october yeah. so that is soon yeah yeah so um I, I was wanting to play the crash trilogy before it um but i it snuck up on me too much i don't think i've got <laughs> the time to go through so three su such frustrating games um uh, yeah uh, but yeah no um yeah i, I might might look at picking up crash 4 actually it looks like looks like fun yeah i'm curious i'm curious i already kind of landed it there for the week where can they find you online uh twitter if you really want to find me at bear munro nice and you can keep up with the show as well on twitter at plastic art pod that is it for us this week we'll see you guys next week bye bye see you later